Okay, we are here. Welcome to the Wu Mountains. We have the pleasure and honor of being in the Wang family tea garden, and we're going to talk about the very important first step of picking tea. And as you can see, we are here surrounded in this beautiful tea garden. And what's important to know when we're talking about the type of tea that we're going to be watching the manufacturing process of today, it's called Xue Xian. And basically, this tea and tea bushes here are the Xue Xian tea bushes. And when we are picking the tea, the picking is very important in the production process of our tea. And when we pick the tea, as you can see, we are picking here for one bud and three leaves, a total of four leaves. And when we pluck, we work our way through the tea, picking the tea, and then quickly putting it into our basket. And the harvesters will work for a few hours during the day, and after picking the tea, they will then return to the workshop for the second step. here in the wonderful, beautiful Wuyi Mountains and we actually have a rare opportunity to see actually how rock tea actually is made. Um, and right now we're at the second stage of production. As you can see here, we've laid out all of our tea leaves. And what this is doing is this is step setting up the withering process. What we're actually doing is this is the first initial step in actually reducing the moisture content in the tea leaves that you see here. Uh, the tea that we are making here is called Shui Shen. And actually, as you can see, we're just about approaching uh, the right amount of water reduction in this second critical step uh, of withering. Also, depending on the humidity, the weather, the amount of sunshine, all of these things impact the amount of time that we're going to leave uh, these tea leaves to wither before moving them inside to our tea production factory. We're going to take a look now at the tea leaves uh, for our Shui Shen tea. And you see that they are just about hitting the point when they are ready to be moved inside. We're reducing the moisture down about 15%. And because of the actual conditions with the sunlight, the humidity and the air, uh, we're actually going to leave these tea leaves to rest about, um, for about two hours. And then we'll move them in uh, inside. And then we'll go and take a look uh, what happens next. We are here with the Wong family and they have been very, very kind uh, to allow us uh, a preview of the tea manufacturing process here in the Wuyi Mountains. So, uh, Mr. Wang, <laughs> and here is uh, the master himself who uh, is going to take us through each of the steps and how to manufacture the wonderful Wuyi Mountain tea. So, for this opportunity, thank you so much. Okay, welcome back, and we are here with Master Wong. Um, and before we talk a little bit about uh, this step, um, I just want to let you know that Master Wong has only done one thing all of his life, and that is make tea, zuo cha yi. And so, I want to ask you, what is the process of making tea? 这个程序在我们制茶过程中是第一道尾雕程序 哇，这个这这这里是非常香。为什么这里有很香的味味道？因为它那个茶叶的话，经过尾雕这一道工序之后，它会有一个自然的一个发酵过程，然后它包括里面的一些茶多酚、茶多糖，然后还有反正就是等
and then that is actually the agitation or the rubbing step. And Yen Shifu here is actually going to demonstrate how this is done traditionally by hand. In Chinese, we say shogongda, and this work is being done by hand. And he's gently rubbing and agitating the tea leaves, and this is setting them up and preparing them for the next step, which is the oxidation period. And as you can see, it's a skill that requires uh, a lot of practice and effort, and we're so lucky to have Mr. Yen here demonstrate how this is done by hand. Yen Shufu Jinda. Jinda, After our agitation step, the next step for producing our rock tea is the resting period where the tea leaves actually now begin to develop the red in the leaf or the oxidation. When the tea master touches the leaves and smells the leaves and decides that this tea is ready, they will then quickly take this for the next step, which is the actual killing of the green. So let's go and check out the next step. Now, the next step after the resting period of our tea leaves is actually called satching. And in English, we know that as the killing of the green. So after the tea master says, my tea is ready, they've smelt it, they've touched it, they would then put it uh, into this machine. And in this machine, actually what we're doing is we're actually applying heat and that application of heat is actually going to kill the green. Now there's different ways of doing this here in Mr. Wong's workshop. This is done by a machine like this, but some of you also may be familiar with the killing of the green done by hand in the large walks as well. So again, this step will be done depending on the humidity and everything for about 12 to 15 minutes. And uh, then we're gonna take a look at what our next step is after that. What we are going to demonstrate is actually the next step, and that is called Ronyen, or where we're actually going to be rolling, forming, and shaping the leaves. And uh, yeah, Mr. Yen is actually going to demonstrate for us how to use uh, this machine. And what's very interesting about this, traditionally this can either be done by hand or done by machine, um, but the interesting thing about this is, is that these actually will not break the tea leaves or anything. And Shifu, you can use this machine. Okay. This machine is the machine that can be used. This machine is the machine that can be used. This machine is the machine that can be used. This machine is the machine that can be used. Okay. 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 压到青叶的鱼叶面上吧。好的。青叶笔的话呢，就压到这里。好。呃，现在开始喽。好。这样子。哇。大概喽，这八至十分钟左右。好。那就叶子进行卷成那个条条手乌龙状。好，非常好。
uh, in the manufacturing process. And this step is called tanbei, and this device is called beilong. And basically, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see this happening live because we're not at the right production step of manufacturing our tea. Um, so we're not actually able to demonstrate this live. If we were here in two weeks, we'd be able to actually demonstrate this live. But I'm a little bit happy about that because when they do this, it gets to be about 45, uh, 40 degrees in the room and it's very, very hot. But basically what we are doing in our final step is we're actually baking the tea. And what the tea master will do is put the tea leaves in here and underneath they will add charcoal. And what that charcoal does um, when it's actually baking the tea, the tea leaves will absorb the aroma and the scent of the charcoal. And what that does is it develops the aroma, the flavor, the taste, and uh, is why we love our rock tea so much in that fiery taste that this final charcoal baking step gives us. And we want to thank the Wang family and Mr. Yen and Wang Shufu for demonstrating all of these steps and, uh, and giving us the opportunity to, to see their workshop here today. So thanks for joining us at Four Seasons Tea. Uh, in the summertime, we're gonna have some of their tea available on our website at www.fourseasonstea.com. Thank you very much everyone for joining us. Hi everyone, okay, and welcome back to our grand finale here. We're wrapping up our time in the Wui Mountains, and what we wanted to do was give everybody a quick view of the six original Dahum Pao trees. If you look up from that first bush and over to the right, those are the original six Dahum Pao trees. Now the Chinese government after 2006 deemed these as very very special trees and they are not able to be harvested anymore. Um, but just to quickly talk about Dahum Pao, the one story that we sort of uh, like to talk about at Four Seasons Tea is the one of the scholar who was traveling uh, through the Wuyi Mountains on his way to Beijing to uh, take an exam. Upon arriving in the Wuyi Mountains, uh, the scholar became ill and had some stomach problems. The local people of the area gave him some Dahum Pao tea to drink, and upon drinking this tea, he suddenly became well again and was able to travel on to Beijing to take the exam. Upon returning to the area, he brought with him this big red cloak and then put it on these trees. And then from that moment on, they started to call these trees the Dahum Pao trees. Prior to this story, these trees were referred to as Qi Dan, but after this story, the name changed to Dahum Pao. So we want to thank everyone for joining us from the Wuyi Mountains. We hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have. Thank you so much. And remember, all of our videos can be viewed at www.4seasonst.com. Thank you so much.